Okay, so um, good morning to you all. I believe you are all doing great. You are welcome to the second meeting for the semester as a course advisor with students. And this morning, I'll be looking at majoring, minoring, and combining philosophy and classes. A course advises perspective. My name is Didi Okansi. I'll be the one to present on this. After this particular session, if students have any queries, they can send through the email showing on our screens. But before I begin, I'd like us to look at the previous semesters in retrospect. What, what were your expectations last academic year and were these expectations met? What were the high and low points of that particular academic year? Is there anything you wish you had done differently in that academic year? What could be the possible reasons why you decided not to drop philosophy and classics? And finally, what expectations do you have for this impending academic year? <clears throat> So I'll now open the floor. Um, you can raise up your hands and decide to talk to us about any of the questions that I have raised as um, an introductory part to today's meeting. So you can just raise up your hands and your microphone will be activated for you to make a submission on any of the questions raised so far. And no one is willing to tell us anything. There's no one willing to share expectations, high and low points, reasons why you decided not to drop philosophy and classics. Yes, Eric. Eric, please okay. unmute your microphone and go ahead with your submission. Hey, good morning, everyone, Doctor. So my expectation was met i wanted to get a i got it in the first place <laughs> okay so, okay Thank with the second second question my highs and low and uh, my low was the the medicine i didn't do well okay because i didn't finish writing or presenting my answers or everything and my okay. high was I did very well in the exams. I did very well. I scored a, a reasonable or good, <laughs> good, good marks. Okay. Some more from you. <laughs> and is there anything you wish you had? Okay. I wish I had finished my medicine. I had finished it to know my strength in it. But I couldn't know, like, oh, because I didn't find And what's the possible, possible reason for you not dropping philosophy? I think it will help me going forward. As, as a young boy or young guy trying to survive in this economy or in this world. And expectation. Okay. I'm expecting a good semester. And void of any, any one to one to any goals or something. That's my answers to these questions. So. Thank you very much, um, Eric Benko. I can see Matilda. Matilda, please 
unmute your microphone and go ahead with your submission. Good morning, Doctor. Yeah, good morning, Matilda. How are you doing? Fine, thank you, sir. Okay. Oh. So last academic year in class six, I was expecting a lot because in level hundred and the first during the first semester. Matilda, your microphone has gone back to muted. Please unmute your microphone. We cannot hear you. If you can hear me, Matilda, kindly unmute. Yes. yes. Okay. So, um, this semester I was expecting a lot, and then I really wanted to know more about the Greek, Roman, everything about it because people used to talk about it and then talk about the Trojan War and everything. So I really wanted to know what exactly was inside. But after we finished doing the Greek Roman literature, I learned that it's not just about the stories and then what happened, but it's about how we compare what happened during those times to our recent days. And it has really helped me, honestly, if not academically, like my lifestyle and then sometimes some decisions, it has really helped me. Yeah. Thank you very much, Matilda. Um, is that the only question you would want to tackle? <laughs> okay, and then my high and then my low point. Um, at the beginning of the semester, I wasn't really well. So things didn't really go as I wanted it. But then getting to the middle of the semester, I picked everything up. And then with the help of you and then Madam Gitti and Madam Nancy, everything went so well. And then I did well too in the philosophy. And then the reason why I'm not thinking of dropping um, classics especially, because I think it's relatable. It's not just about coming to learn and then get the grades and then graduate, but it's about how I'm going to apply that in my daily life and affect society. Yeah. Okay, Matilda. Um, Thank you very much. Would anyone want to share with us their thoughts on any of the questions showing on our screen? Would anyone want to share with us their thoughts on any of the questions showing on our screens? Just raise up your hands. Your microphone would be activated for you to make your submission. It's supposed to be an interactive session. And I expect all of us to come on board and share your thoughts. For it, for all you know, your your thoughts can be a solution to someone's problem. Here is Jacob Tahiru. Tahiru, please unmute your microphone and go ahead with your submission. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, Tahiru. Um, please, I would like to talk about um how classics and philosophy is helping me so far okay because, um, i'm doing a little bit of school politics and then i could understand that from classics and philosophy before i make my, any arguments or before i start to talk about anything i have to know what people are going to say against it and i have to prepare myself and it's actually helping because now when i'm talking or when you want to have an argument you don't just speak you know exactly what you're talking about. And it becomes very easy for you to convince somebody when you understand a person's point of view. And then in addition, with the high and low points, um, almost all the times, from the beginning of the semester, sometimes I pick up very well, but then when it's getting to the middle, I don't know what happens to me actually, but things becomes the other way around. But hopefully with exams, I'm always able to come up small. Yes, that's what I would like to share. Okay, thank you very much, Tahiru. Um, I saw someone's hands up, but the person has dropped their hands. So I would just like to make some few comments on the submissions made so far. Um, one of the things I've noticed over the years, okay, yes, Insia, 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 I think it's Emmanuel Insia. Can you mute your, yes, go ahead. Yes, please. Um, sir, please, I would like to touch on the fourth one. 
Okay. The reason why I wouldn't like to drop philosophy of or classic is that it really helps me to think critically. For example, the exams, some of yeah, the um the philosophy exams, both the philosophy and classic exams, some of the points that um I wouldn't even think of writing, but because of the exams, I was able to think critically and then give out and then explain the like my reasons and okay. Okay. after the exams too my results was also very very good in fact i was so happy i was so 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 happy about the results that's why i will not drop philosophy cry like i won't drop it <laughs> okay so good to hear good to hear good to hear i'm, I'm very excited with some of the feedbacks I am getting. But as I on, um, was about to begin, one of the things I noticed over the years is that when the semester begins, I get surprised that even the first week, students are nowhere to be found. But in my estimation, the first lecture with your lecturer is something you should not toil with for a number of reasons. At that first lecture, the lecturer comes in independent on its, on its own without having any preconceived idea about the class. So the lecturer comes in in his, in, in his personal capacity. He has, not been, he has not encountered any student. No other students has got him or her bored he comes the, the, the lecturer comes in neutral and it is a good opportunity for you to read the behavior the actions the inactions of the lecturer in order to know how you are going to react to that particular course so i would advise that for you to be able to settle down early the moment school reopens and the halls have been made available, move in and try as much as possible to settle down before the first lecture. The, attending the first lecture is as important as attending the other lectures. The other thing I would like to talk about in relation to the submissions made is what we call time management. One of the things I've noticed over the years is that students do not manage their times well. I always make this analysis that in a day, the highest number of times you can attend lectures is three times in a day. And that is just six hours. So let us assume that you attend lectures three times in a day and that is six hours, and you sleep six hours also, you have 12 hours. The remaining 12 hours, what do we do with it as students? What do we do with it? Our inability to manage our time on a daily basis is a contributing factor to what happens during the examination period. Oh, the other student will say, me, I learn under pressure, and I learn under pressure in this thing. There is nothing wrong preparing yourself for a paper. There is nothing wrong with it. There is nothing wrong with it. Preparing yourself way ahead before a particular paper. So that argument of I learn under pressure, I learn under pressure, I do not subscribe to it. Between the time that school reopens and the time you are waiting for the pressure, there is a lot that you can do. Time management also has to do with how you manage your exam time. If it is a mid-semester exam and you've been told that you have to write one essay and the examination period is just one hour, it is the student's responsibility to divide the time allocated in his, his or her quest to answer a particular question. 
But you see, you may not be able to manage it well if one, you have not adequately prepared for the paper. So instead of you writing, it is in the examination hall that you start thinking. And some of us will spend about 20 minutes thinking. That 20 minutes could have helped us to finish a particular essay. So my advice is that try as much as possible to manage your time during the day within the semester and try as much as possible to also manage your time during the examination period. The other thing I also like to talk about based on the submissions that have been made so far is what I call the law of diminishing returns. So at the beginning of the semester, most of us are so eager. Hey, hey, I won't miss any lecture. So first lecture, second lecture, third lecture, fourth lecture. And I think this happens because of familiarity. Oh, I said lecture on the on check here, ten lands. Lecture on the crowd, oh yeah, they be a little bit 10 minutes. Lecture on the crowd, I mentioned I'm pen last time, I don't want to The moment that happens, the law of diminishing returns are set in. And you may not be able to reach your goal if you reduce your speed. So if you use a typical athlete as an example, if you are running a 100 meter race, you not say that, oh, for the first 30 meters, actually, me the speed will be shame on last minute, you know, my, my homie. No, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. The speed you begin with, in fact, should be the same speed you would end with. And in most cases, even at the ending level, the speed has to even increase. So you cannot begin the semester all over the place, so eager to attend lectures, so eager to prepare before attending lectures, only for you to decide to rest, cool down in the middle of the semester or at the tail end of the semester. So based on the submission, I've touched on managing our time. I've spoken about the law of diminishing returns. So I'll move on to the next slide, which I prepared for this. It's my motivation, my motivation, my motivation. The reason why I'm organizing this meeting is on these, is for these reasons. About three weeks ago, a student called me. It, that was around 11 something PM. So I, I think about eight missed calls. Um, I couldn't return it. The next morning I, I, I returned it. And this student was so down, so frustrated. Say, say, baby, hear me, baby, hear me, baby, hear me, baby, hear me. I can't graduate. I can't graduate. In fact, if I had known, I shouldn't have done this course. I shouldn't have done this course. I, I shouldn't have majored this course. I shouldn't have minored. I, I, I was so down. And this is someone who has been in the system for four years. And all of a sudden, reality has checked in. Reality has checked in for her to now come to terms with the fact that she made a wrong choice in her decision to either major, minor, or combine a particular course. There have been instances where I've also received very frustrating WhatsApp messages from students. Frustrating in the sense that they, they do not know what really, really decision to make, to either major, to either minor, or to either combine philosophy and classics with another call. There have been countless instances where parents have called me, and I assume that these Parents are concerned parents, concerned about the welfare of their ward. They want to know, I saw a person on your classics. But I said, I mean, put them not in person or by humanities. I said, I can be so on your nursing. Nursing, they will be in a by my way to my lecture. Yeah, any day. There have been instances where some parents have dictated to students 
that hey, drop your causeway, your causeway, without necessarily evaluating the strength and capability of the award in performing well in a particular course. And students become so frustrated to the center. Say, hey, it is my father now. It is my father. My father. He said I should do the philosophy and combine it with the economics. But say, I can't. I can't. I can't. There have been a lot of distress calls. Distress calls. There have been times that students have booked an appointment with me to come to the office to tell me, oh, say, I I'm really, really confused. In fact, I, in, initially I wanted to minor, but the other course is too difficult. So I now want to combine. Meanwhile, the portal for the add and drop has been closed. And you notice that these motivating factors are still prevalent in modern times. Modern times in the sense that some of us are going through this. We are frustrated on what to major, what to minor, what to combine. Our parents are equally confused on what to advise us on what to do. So these stories, in fact, true life stories, depict the perennial psychological trauma most students face when deciding on whether they want to major, on whether they want to minor, on whether they want to combine philosophy and classes with another course. And the purpose of today's meeting is to enlighten prospective level 300 students and even prospective level 200 students of philosophy and classics on what it means to single major, on what it means to minor, or on what it means to combine major philosophy and classics at the University of Ghana. The purpose of today's presentation is also to educate students on the requirements as they journey on with the department of philosophy and classics. And I am hoping that at the end of today's presentation, we will be able to understand the following concept, single major, minor, and combined major. I had, we as a department, we acknowledge that there is a quagmire that the philosophy and classic students face. Why? Because it, philosophy and classes is not a subject that is studied at the pre-university level. And as a result of that, we are not surprised that students who are normally offered philosophy and classes at the University of Ghana often raise the following questions. What is philosophy? What is classics? What job opportunities can philosophy and classics offer me? And these are legitimate questions, but I think that should not be the focus. The focus is should, should be on what contribution can philosophy and classics contribute to my life as an individual? How and to what extent can philosophy and classics help in the development of Ghana? This rather should be the focus of students rather than looking at what the course itself is and what job opportunities they are. And I'm saying this for, for just a simple reason. I believe that if, the, if you allow yourself to allow the course to develop your personality as an individual, there will not be any job opportunity that will pass you by. Because in the course of the training, you as a student have prepared yourself way ahead to take advantage of the job opportunities that will come your way. And as a result of that, you become a citizen that is ready to contribute his or her quota to national development. So let's look at the definition of some key Terms. The first we'll look at is single major. What does it mean to single major? These are just some simple stipulative definition I've ascribed to this concept. It is the single specialization. It is the single concentration within a particular degree 
And as a result of that, it designates that you have completed a comprehensive study in one particular course within a program of study. So if you want to do a single major in philosophy or you want to do a single major in classics, it means that you have a single concentration. That shows that you have completed a comprehensive, you have a comprehensive understanding of that particular course you want to single major. If you do a combined major, it is the combined or the dual or the double specialization or concentration within a particular degree which designates that you have a comprehensive or you have completed a comprehensive study in two courses within a program of study. And to minor, it means that it is the secondary specialization or concentration within a degree, which designates that you have completed a minor, minor, minor study in one course but a comprehensive study in another course within a program of study. And this is what makes the University of Ghana very unique. Unique in the sense that when you are admitted to the University of Ghana, you are offered three courses. And the University of Ghana expects that the student explores these three courses and makes a final decision on whether they want to minor one or whether they want to combine one or what or whether they want to do a single major in one. In other universities, when you are offered geography, you do only geography the four years of your study. But we believe as the University of Ghana that to reflect the true meaning of university, which means universitas, a universal understanding of concept, of programs, of philosophy, of phenomena, you need to be given the opportunity to explore. And in the course of that exploration, the student is able to make a decision. Let me give you a typical example, or let me use myself as a typical example. When I came to the University of Ghana, I was offered geography, economics, and classics. Proud to me entering the University of Ghana, my mind was to major economics and, and delete the two that I was given. But when I came into the university and I explored these three courses, I noticed that no, what I really want to do is classics. But at the same time, I did not want to throw away the geography. So in that quagmire, I decided to now do a combined major. So I dropped economics and combined geography with classics. So that is what, or that is what the University of Ghana brings to bear in relation to giving you a number of courses for you to decide on whether you want to single major, on whether you want to combine, or whether you want to mine minor. So these are the main concepts that we'll be talking about. Now, when we put these concepts into practice, as we decide on the courses we will be registering for a particular semester, what, what does it mean? What does it mean? So when you are doing a single major, it means that you would be having 12 credit hours with the department you want to do the single major with. And every department has two core courses and a number of electives. So when you're doing a single major in level 300, it means that you have to do or offer or register all the two core courses in addition to two electives. 
But if after that, you have not met the minimum credit hours, you can now decide in level 300 to pick other courses from the other department you were with in level 200. To combine, it means you'll be offering just nine credit hours, and that nine credit hours translates into you registering for all the two core courses in that particular department and just one elective. It also means that for the other department or for the other course that you are combining either philosophy or classics with, you also be offering nine credit hours and together you'll be getting your 18 credit hours minimum. So when you are combining, you register for all the two core courses and one elective. If you are majoring, you register for all the two, all the two core courses and two elective. Now, when you are minoring, when you are minoring, you just offer one core course, which translates into three credit hours. It means that for you to get the 18 credit hours minimum, you would have to register majority of your courses from the other department you are not minoring from. That is the other department you are offering in levels 200. Now, whether you are majoring, whether you are combining, or whether you are minoring, there are there can be instances where you would be able to register, you, you would have met all the departmental requirements, yet you may not have exhausted your minimum credit hours or even your maximum credit hours. When that happens, the student can opt for what we call a free elective. A free elective either from the same department or from any other department. Let me repeat this. I'm saying that it is possible that for some students, after you have satisfied all the departmental requirements, based on the student's choice of either majoring, combining, or minoring, the student may not have met or exhausted the minimum credit hours or even the maximum credit hours. And when that happens, the student has that responsibility to decide to choose and register any other course from either this, any other elective, let me be specific, any other elective from either the same department or from another department, provided you do not exceed your maximum credit hours. <coughs> what does it mean? It means that if you are in level 200 and you want to either minor philosophy and classics, or you want to either combine philosophy and classics, or you want to even major philosophy and classics, you should have registered two courses. That is problems of philosophy and outlines of Greco-Roman civilization. Where the problems of philosophy, my senior colleague, Dr. Nancy is the one handling it. Then the outlines of Greco-Roman civilization, I together with my senior colleague, Jifa Efoji, who be teaching it. So irrespective of your decision to either major, minor, or combine philosophy and classics, the student must endeavor to register for these courses in level 200. So if you are in level 300 or you are going to level 300 and you did not register for all these two courses, courses in the first semester of level 200, it means that at the moment you have not satisfied the departmental requirement. So that's what it means for our level 100s coming to level 200. Now, for those of you entering level 300, it is a major life-changing decision to either now decide to do the minoring, 
the majoring or the combining with either classics alone or philosophy alone. The university system does not allow us to combine major or minor both philosophy and classics at the same time. So if you decide to major, you should make a decision that you are majoring either in classics or you are majoring in philosophy. If you are minoring, you decide whether you are minoring in philosophy or minoring in classics with the other course. And if you are combining, is the same thing. So for the classic student, those who want to still continue with classics in level 300, you would have to register class 301, which is the pre-Socratic philosophy. It will be taught by my senior colleague, MKO Asante. This is just philosophy. Um, this is just an introductory um, um, course to the philosophers before Socrates. So all the philosophers who philosophize before Socrates, this is the course that you, you will be introduced to. Then you will also have to register the Greek epic and drama. So it means that if you are majoring, you have to register for all the two core courses. If you are combining, you have to register for all the two core courses. But if you are minoring, you just have to pick just one core course. So you can decide to either pick only the pre-Socratic philosophy or only the Greek epic and drama. Please, let me repeat it again. If you are majoring or combining, all the two core courses have to be registered for. But if you are minoring, only one core course. These are the electives available for this semester. Africa in the ancient Greek world. The arts of government in ancient Greece. Gender in ancient Greece. Then those who are interested in the language can do reading Greek one. The African in the ancient Greek world and the art of government in the ancient Greek world will be taught by my senior colleague, Benes Adamson Nete. Then gender in Asian Greece will be taught by my senior colleague, Gifty Etonam um, Katahina. She is the female lecturer I taught with in level 100 for main campus. And in level 200, the female lecturer I taught with last semester. Then the reading Greek. And so those of you who are interested in reading law, the art of governance and the gender, those who are interested in gender studies. In fact, the electives are all good and you just have to pick them in relation to what you want to do. So if you want to major, you are picking all the two core courses and two electives. So out of the four options available, you decide on which of them you would want to pick. If you are minoring, you just choose one core courses and it is not compulsory to pick an elective if you are minoring. But if you want to pick an elective, yeah, these are the options available. If you are combining, it means that you have to pick all the two core courses and just one of the elective. That is if you are combining. Okay. Now, what it means for those of us who want to um, continue with philosophy and not classics. The core courses are didactic logic and moral philosophy. Didactic logic and moral philosophy. Then the electives available is the philosophy of mind, rationalism, and African philosophy. So if you are majoring, you pick all the two core courses and any two elective. If you are minoring, you just pick one core course. You don't have to pick an elective. If you are combining, you pick all the two core courses and just one elective. So this is what it means to choose either philosophy over classics and vice versa in level 300. Now, I'm moving on to the next subtopic, but I'll pause here for question and answers. 
I'll pause here for questions and answers. So what I've been doing so far is to look at the concept of majoring, the concept of minoring, the concept of combining. And I've also related these concepts for us to appreciate them as we do or register our courses and what it means. So if you have any question on any of these, please raise up your hands. You've been given an opportunity to ask your question. Please ask your questions now. Please ask your questions now. Is there any question on the submissions I've made so far? Any questions on the submissions I've made so far? Yes, George Yolson. Hello, sir. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. How are you doing? I'm good, sir. I'm okay. Is there a place I want, I want to ask if um, you have a total of 12 credit hours? Yes. Can you decide, like, is it compulsory for you to add another course or you can maintain that the 12 credit hours? You cannot maintain the 12 credit hours because per the university requirement, the minimum credit hours is 18 credit hours. I hope okay. George, you understand me. So after you've satisfied all the departmental requirement from the department you want to major from, right? You would have to go and pick courses from the other department that you were with in level 200. So in case you were doing political science and philosophy and classics, and in level 300, you want to offer philosophy and you want to offer philosophy or you want to offer classics, you'd have to satisfy the 12 credit hours with the classics department, with the philosophy and classics department. Then the remaining credit hours should come from the political science because that was what we were offering in level 200 in order to make up or meet the minimum credit hours. All right, sir. So please, so what about if you are doing um, combined major? Yes, if you are doing combined major, it means that per the, the, the definitions we looked at, right? If you are doing combined major, it means that you would have to satisfy the de departmental requirement from both courses or from both departments. So once again, let's use political science and philosophy and classics as an example. You want to combine major, political science and classics. It means that you do the um, nine credit hours in classics and nine credit hours in political science. What it means is that automatically you would have to register the two core courses and one elective in classics, and you do the same thing for political science. So at the end of the semester, you would have registered for six courses, four of which will be core courses, two of which will be elective courses. Yes, sir. Has your question been answered? Yes, please, sir. Okay. Any other question? Any other question? Any other question? Please ask questions. Ask questions. Ask questions. Are we all clear in our mind on what it means to major, minor, and combine philosophy and classics? Yes, Abeku. Abeku. Sir, please, good morning. Yeah, good morning, uh, Abeku. Sir, please, my question is in relation to um, long essays. Sir, okay. what, um, what situation will require one to write a long essay and to be able to grab it? That's my question, okay. sir. Yeah, so the, the issue of long essays will only come in in level 400. Okay, the issue of long essays will only come in in level 400. But the advice I would give is that there are some departments that would normally have research methods in either level 300 or level 400 first semester. So if you really want to do a long essay, I would advise that, I would advise that you pick research methods as one of the courses from the department you want to write a long essay from. Yes, please. I hope you understand. In order yes, to make 
long essay writing is there. But as I earlier on indicated, the issue of long essays only come in in level 400. Thank you, sir. You're welcome, Abeku. Le, yes, Susanna. Yes, Susanna. Susanna, your microphone is on, but we cannot hear you. Susanna, if you can hear me, please amplify your voice. We cannot hear you. Um, as we wait for Susanna, does any okay? Um, Maureen, 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 yes, yes Maureen. Morning. Yeah, good morning, Maureen. Please, how accurate is it if you do combine major? Like, if you do combine major, does it mean that you can't do the long essay, or is just dependent on some departments? Uh, it is one dependent on some department. But what I know is that if you are doing a combined major, you can still decide to write a long essay. But it only means that it is possible you may exceed your credit hours. So all you have to do is to draw our attention very early. The head of department will write a note for it, the portal to open for you to in order to register for it, even though you have exceeded your minimum credit hours. Thank you. Okay, so you just draw attention early that, oh, I'm combining. I like to write a long essay. But if I read it, because a long essay is a six credit hour course, right? So if you register for it, it is possible you might exceed your credit, your total credit hours. So all we have to do is to just request from the HOD to write a letter, and that will be possible. So it has happened before and it is possible. So that should not be a problem. When you are combining, you can still write a long essay. Okay, Francis. Francis. Or Francis. Um, 1098 Please unmute your microphone and go ahead with your question. Good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning, Francis. Yeah. Uh, in case of um I'm to uh, select political science as my major and then minor in classics. That means I'm supposed to choose nine courses from the poli uh, political science side and then choose how many courses from here, the classic no, side. Not nine courses, not nine courses. We can't pick nine courses, right? So it means that all what as classes, all what we'll be interested in is for you to register for just one course. Okay. I, I hope you understand me. All you have to do is just register for one course. So you can decide to just register for the pre Socratic philosophy or the Greek African drama. Then the remaining is that it's just three credit hours. So the remaining 15 credit hours should come from political science. I okay. hope you understand me. Yes. Because you are minoring in classics. And for my opinion, you just need one core course. But this is my advice I always give that if you are fine and you finish registering with the other department and you have met that department's requirement, in case you have a free elective because you have not exceeded the maximum credit hours, try as much as possible to pick an elective. Okay, sir. I hope you're understanding. Yeah, but it is not compulsory for you to pick a lecture. If you are mine, just one course. But the advice I would give is that if you are minoring and if you have all the departmental requirements for the course, you still have an opportunity to pick an elective. You pick it from the department you are minoring. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you. 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 Thank any other question? Please ask your questions or ask your questions. Ask your question. I learned the portal is open. So if you have paid your fees and you have decided on what to really do, kindly go ahead and register. And for those of you who will be struggling with rooms, um, bear in mind that if you have not paid your fees, you'll not be able to even book a room. 
So make sure you've paid your fees, you registered at least one course as you wait for the portal to be open for the room allocations. Yes, Evelyn. <coughs> Sorry. Good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning, Evelyn. Um, sir, please, about the long essay. Yes. I wanted to know if it's compulsory to do it or is there any other alternative? No, it's not compulsory. In our department, long essay is optional. It is optional. So in place of the long essay, you register a normal course. I hope you understand. Me. So yes, long essay is not compulsory. But I always say this, for those of you who really want to major, I guess you are majoring for a reason. So it would be nice for you to write a long essay if you are majoring, but it is not compulsory. Long essays are optional, are optional. So in place of it, you can register for any other course in the department that will be mounted for that particular academic year. Thank you, sir. You are welcome, Evelyn. Any other question? Any other question? Any other question? Any other question? Please ask your questions or ask your questions. Okay, so in the absence of any other question, yes, Evelyn, your hands are still up. Evelyn, your hands were still up, okay? Okay, okay. Yes, yeah, so what are the probable contributing factors that influence this major life-changing decision? Negative historical antecedent. Charlie, philosophy and classes in the last semester, I'm cool you. Internet, they mean to me major. I don't want to major. I don't want to major because of the negative historical antecedent. Right? So what has happened in the past? <sighs> no. That level, that level 200 course, part level philosophy and classes. Hey, the way I suffered part to even get that D, I don't think I can continue with it. So that is one of the reasons why students decide to either continue with the department or drop um, um, or continue with another department. Then there's also what we call the friend affiliation syndrome. Hey, my all my friends are doing the philosophy, so me too, I'm going to do the philosophy. Hey, all the friends are doing the archaeology, so I'm also going to do the archaeology. Hey, all my me, I learn with my friends. So because of that, I don't want to lose. The, uh, so I want the, then whatever my friend is registering for, I also register for the same thing. It happens. Then people also decide on whether to major, combine or minor because they fear some lectures. They fear some lectures. Hey, some lectures in the Nichimura day, did you can see Nichimura day, Papa? Hey. Oh, must set the question. They, 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 they are scared of some lectures, and because of that, they decide to either drop the department or continue with another. Then there's there's this also perception, the supposed social status. Hey, I am offering philosophy. I am offering classics. I am offering political science. You know, there, there is that supposed social status ascribed to a particular course. That students pride themselves in. In fact, two years ago, I met a serious student politician. And as the, this student politician was so pompous and so feeling too benzet benzet about the course he is offering. Only for me, for them to finish school, to go and be invigilating racist students, to see him there. In fact, I was surprised and shocked that the entire racist examination, every day he came to read, write a paper. Meanwhile, this was someone who was priding himself as a result of the social status that supposed cause gave him. Then there's also family pressure. Some of us still are not allowed to make decisions for ourselves and on our own. And for that matter, our uncle somewhere, our auntie somewhere, our father, or a mother or even siblings decide, hey, drop it, drop a philosophy, hey, drop a classics, like, like, class, a drop. They decide for us. They decide for us. They decide for us. Then there's also the, the, the issue of a perceived job opportunity. That, oh, uh, oh yeah, philosophy and classics. Now, they do my man, I look at it. Philosophy in the class, there's that perception 
that certain jobs are particularly attached to specific courses. But I beg to differ. I beg to differ. That is not the case. So I, I always say that apart from the specialized courses or the professional courses, I have not seen any job advertisement that says only philosophy students to apply or only classic students to apply or even in only economic students should apply. Normally what you see is that any first degree holder, any first degree holder is eligible for the job opening. Most majority, about 90% of the job openings are available. It's only a few, the remaining 10% or so that are specific, professional specific. So to choose a course, because of a friend affiliation syndrome, because you like a particular lecture, forgetting that that particular lecture will not teach you all the courses in that part, for that particular semester. But because you like that one particular lecture, so because of that, hey, hey, I'm going to offer the course. I, I don't think that these probable reasons, which is the negative historical antecedent, the friend affiliation syndrome, the fear or likeness of some lectures, and the supposed social status together with the family pressure and the perceived job opportunities <coughs> should be the basis for choosing a particular course and for that matter, deciding to major, minor or combine a particular course. Right, so these are some of the probable motivating factors that normally influence students who are normally um, in this particular, um, find themselves in this particular um, scenario. What should be the ideal situation? In my candid opinion, I believe that before a student decides to either major, minor, or combine a particular course, that student has to perform what we call a SWOT analysis. A SWOT analysis. What is a SWOT analysis? It is normally a strategic tool. A strategic tool that is used by individuals, by organization, to evaluate and identify, one, their strengths, two, their weaknesses, three, their opportunities, and four, their threats. In fact, SWOT analysis provides a comprehensive framework for assessing both your internal and external factors. And these internal or external factors can to a larger extent impact on your current performance and your future performance. What do I mean by um, identifying and evaluating using the SWOT analysis. I said the S stands for strength, strength, strength. What internal attributes do I have? As a student, what internal attributes do I have as a competitive advantage over other students? Can I leverage on these strengths as a positive aspect of who I am? These are some of the things you should be thinking about. So do I have that capacity in terms of intellectual capacity? Do I have the interest? You know, what, 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 what am I bringing on board as a strength as I decide to major, minor, or combine a particular course. It is very, very important. What limitations do I have? You see that it will be easier for you to identify and evaluate your strength based on what has happened in the past. Ah, in level 100, I did philosophy and classics. In level 200, I did philosophy and classics. What were some of my strengths? Oh, last that semester, I had an A. The other semester, I had a B. What could be the possible reasons that contributed in me having the A, then these become your strength. 
Oh, I, the B I had, what could have been the contributing factor? It could have been your weakness. So performing the SWOT analysis, beginning with your strength, is a critical point in deciding on whether you want to major, minor, or combine philosophy and classics with another course. The W in the SWOT stands for weaknesses. What are my deficiencies? What are my limitations? Me, I don't like mathematics. And one of the courses, it is mathematics. It is a limitation. So why would you force yourself to go and offer it? Me, I don't like reading. This course, too, it is a reading course. Yeah, you have to really, really read. It is a weakness. Can that weakness be turned into a strength within the time frame that you have in that particular semester? These are some of the legitimate questions you, you should have to be asking yourself. And the weakness you, you can also be asking yourself, is there any factor that can hinder my ability to perform very well in that particular course? The O in the SWOT stands for opportunities. What opportunities are there if I decide to major philosophy and classics? What opportunities are there if I decide to minor philosophy and classics? What opportunities are available if I decide to minor philosophy and classics? These are questions you have to be asking yourself. But you just do not get up and make the decision of majoring, minoring, or combining because you like a lecture or you do not like a lecture because there is family pressure because of job. No. What opportunities are there? One for you as an individual, do not forget. I said that for you to be able to make it after school, it is dependent on how you have prepared yourself in the, within the four years of being in school. So what can this particular course contribute to my life as an individual? These are some of the legitimate questions you, you have to be asking yourself. Then your threats, your threats. What could be some of the element, external, I mean, or conditions that can potentially harm my performance? Oh, this can have this ever harm you. I do ever harm you, pa. Ever harm me. You know, you should be thinking about some of these things. And you know, as you do that, you'll be able to collate some relevant information or data, either internally or externally. And that may cause you to have a review of your choices that you are making. And the purpose of the SWOT analysis is to gain insight. It's to gain the insight. It's to gain the insight as to how both your internal factors and external factors can interact and how can they influence your strategic choice that you want to make to either major or minor. <clears throat> and after, after you do the SWOT analysis, you can decide to develop strategies Oh, okay, I noticed that um, this and this. So, okay, okay, I'll do it this way. I'll do it that way. You can only be able to improve yourself after you've performed the SWOT analysis in order to know how to go about things. I've always said this in times in our number that you cannot keep on doing the same thing the same way and expect a different result. No, that is not going to happen. You can only get a different result if you change the way you do things, if you change the way you make your choices, if you change the way you think about issues, if you change the way you react to issues. So if you really want to plan strategically, as you decide to either major or minor or combine, I would advise you perform a SWOT analysis. Then the other thing I would advise you to do is to perform a background search on the course you want to major, combine, or minor with. 
So, talk to some level 300. Because there have been several examples where people perceive that, oh, this particular course, they're easy. Oh. Then majority of them fail. So talk to them, those who have experienced it. They, they will tell you. But you see, their experiences should not be the deciding factor alone. It should be that in addition to the SWOT analysis, so that you have a comprehensive, you may have that, a comprehensive thought through process as you make the decision to either major, combine, or minor a particular course. Consider your future career orientation. There have been several examples where students have decided to follow that I like a particular lecture, I don't like a particular lecture, then my parents are putting pressure on me, and so on and so forth. And they lose focus on their future career orientation. How related, directly or indirectly, is what I want to be in future <clears throat> with a course I want to either major in, minor in, or combine in. This is a legitimate question you have to ask yourself as you make this decision. And finally, you have to consider your future academic interests. We have said this stage in our number. If there is money, the last point of call when it comes to the educational ladder is a master's degree. So I'll be happy if all my students are able to pursue a master's degree after the first degree. But you see, that master's degree will also be dependent on the degree you had as your first degree. So what are your future academic interests? The course I want to major, minor, or combine it. What relationship has that got to do with my future academic interests? And I believe that based on all these four I am proposing, which may not be the only you'll be able to make an informed decision. And I believe your life will never be the same. Thank you very much for your attention. I'll pause here for questions and answers. Any question? On the submissions I've made so far? Any question? on the submissions I've made so far. Any question? On the submission I've made so far. Any question? On the submission I've made so far. Okay, so in the absence of further questions, I'd like to just briefly summarize what I've done so far this morning, then we call it a day. So we began the session by asking some thought-provoking questions as a prelude to this morning's presentation. Um, we looked at the definition of some key times. If you are single major, you have to register 12 credit hours or the two core courses and an elective combined major or the two, uh, if you are single major, or the two core courses and two electives combined major or the two core courses and just one elective. Then if you are minoring, just one core course, right? So for level 200, as a matter of certainty, you have to register for these two courses, PACL 201 and PACL 203. Those of you in level 300, um, going, coming to 300 and want to continue with classics, you register for these two core courses right and two elective if you want to combine the two core courses and one elective if you are minoring just one core course the same applies to philosophy those will be choosing a philosophy option if you are majoring two core courses two elective combining two core courses one elective minoring just the core course just a core course so you can decide to pick only deductive logic or only moral philosophy. We've gone through the probable motivating factors, which I say students should not over depend on them. So you, you shouldn't depend on the negative historical antecedent. You shouldn't be, depend on friend affiliation syndrome. You shouldn't be, decide to either major, minor or combine because you like some lectures or you don't like some lectures. 
you, you shouldn't choose a particular course because of a su supposed social status ascribed to that particular course, and you shouldn't do so because of family pressure, and you also shouldn't do so because of a perceived job opportunity. Rather, your choice to either major, minor, combine should be dependent on your SWOT analysis, should be dependent on what you glean from the background, search you've done on that particular course, should also be dependent on your future career orientation and future academic interest. On that note, we've brought come to an end of today's meeting. It's been lovely seeing you all again. Um, have a nice day and bye for now. Thank you very much, sir. Those who want to talk, you can unmute your microphone and exchange pleasantries. Yes, Tahira, I can see you. <laughs> I can see you. Abigail, Abigail. You can see the world. <laughs> no, you oh, yeah. Say, say how you doing? I'm okay. I'm Hello. Good with you. With Ford, I can see you. First, I see you. Anastasia. Say, I'm here. I'm here. Bang. Randolph, Samuel, I see you. Uh, Prince, Prince. Yeah, Clifford, um, David, Elizabeth, Erica, Eugene, Eunice, Evelyn, Gertrude, Henry, Hilda, Jacob, Jeremy, I see you all. Kukwa, hey, Lady Ruby, I see you. Um, Louisa, I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you. I see Prince, Prince Daniel, Vanessa, Yossi. Um, Anita, you raise up your hands. Yes, go ahead. Mm. Yes, Anita. How was your night? Okay. okay. Um, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Sorry? I didn't see your name inside there. Yeah. Uh, this is my name in the second semester. And of course, Yes, uh, uh, said, the, second so that, the second semester. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah, uh, semester. You know, the first semesters are packed for me because I teach 100 and 200 and get thinking. So, the first semester is for 300, I'm mostly on our level. But the second semester, um, you will see the effective. And a TV hearing. Yeah, so you can come and pick it as an elective during the second semester or even a free okay. yes thank you please uh so that means this semester we will go the semester without you yes but do not forget i said your choice of continuing with a particular course should not be dependent it's on a lecture or dislike oh. a particular course. Course. i drop the course when you are not there oh don't do that <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you meet you meet some other lectures that are better far, far better than what you think you, you, we hope to see the future but i believe i believe i'm very optimistic that both of them are very competent um very competent but they are also unique in their own way so for you to really have a fair idea First lecture, right? In fact, make a very informed decision. That's how I review the philosophy and class department has some of the best lectures in the University of Ghana. And your decision to choose to major, minor, or combine will be welcomed. Thank you very much. So I'll Sir, end the meeting. Yes. Seb, just before you go, please, I wanted to, I want to find out how is Madam Gifty doing. Yeah, Madam Gifty is doing good. In fact, I wanted her to join the meeting because she Aww. is the current exams officer. So, uh, but unfortunately, that could not happen. But she's doing good. And we yeah, are working too like, much. To work with her. So let's see how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. Sir, I love her so much. So, be careful. <laughs> okay, okay. So, bye bye. Um. Bye.